Alrighty, we have covered what I believe are the core concepts of WPF MVVM applications. We have a fully functioning application. Now we're just ready to publish it, which is arguably the most important part. So before doing the publishing, what I did was just polish up the application. So for example, added a few things. If we load these reservations and no reservations have been made, we show a message for that. For making a reservation, got some more validation on here. So if we have an empty username, then we get a validation error. Another thing I added is if the end date is before the start date, we had this validation last time, but what I did was disable submitting if we have this validation error. But then if all the validation is good, we can submit. And now I've added a loading spinner and disable these buttons while we're submitting. So we still get the success message and then the reservation appears. And then lastly, also added an error message to this UI as well. For example, if we get a reservation conflict exception, we get an error message for that. So just wanted to make those improvements, but I did them off camera because there weren't really any new concepts there. It was kind of just building off things that we've already done and doing it in other places. But now, get ready, it is time to publish. And this is actually extremely easy in .NET Core, .NET 5, and beyond using the .NET Publish command. So if we go to our project and select Open in Terminal, we get this terminal down here and we can do our .NET Publish. So pretty straightforward, all we have to do is .NET Publish. We want to publish this in release mode, so not debug, so we can do a dash C release, and let's do it. All right, success, so that has been published to our bin, let's go check that out. All right, so in the bin, we published it as release. Our project is .NET 5 for Windows, and we have our published directory. And here we go, looks good, here is our application. So, let's go ahead and run it. And there we go, seems to be working well. As we see our database did generate inside of our bin, that's good. We can make a reservation, and there we go, all good. So one thing to note about the way that we publish this, is that in order to run this application, the user is gonna have to have .NET installed on their computer. So in some cases, that might be an issue, but there's a way around that. So on .NET Publish, we have this option for dash dash self dash contained, and that's gonna publish our application as self-contained, meaning that the .NET runtime is packaged up with the application. So the user will not need to install .NET on their machine. Let's try this and everything should work, right? No, it does not. So if we wanna specify self-contained, we also need to specify a runtime identifier. So if we go to our project file, we can edit that and we need a runtime identifier. You can also have runtime identifiers if you have multiple runtime identifiers, but we're just gonna have one. And this is used to specify our target platform. So if I bring up this runtime identifier catalog, we get a list of all the different runtime identifiers. So here's all the Windows ones, and Linux and Mac, but WPF doesn't work on Linux or Mac, so we don't have to worry about those. We are just gonna focus on the Windows ones, and for now, we're just gonna do Win X64. So our target platform is Windows X64 machines, and now we can do the .NET Publish again as self-contained, and let's go check out our bin. So previously, we were looking in this Publish directory, and this had our exe in it, but now our application has been published to Win X64, so that's the runtime identifier that we specified. Let's go in there. And as you can see, there's a lot more in here now because we included the .NET runtime with our application. So if I scroll through here, here we go. We got Reservim and we can run again. Generates the database, that's good. And now we can make our reservation again. So everything works just fine, except now the user does not need .NET installed on their machine. Oh, and actually I was running from WinX64, but inside this WinX64, we should go into the publish directory and this is the actual publish output. Although honestly, it seems to be pretty much the same. So the last thing we can do is actually publish this as a single file. So to do that, do our regular publish, except now we can do a p colon publish single file equals true and try this again. And right, I messed that up. This should be a dash p publish single file. Try that again and seems to be working. Let's go check out our publish directory. And maybe I should wipe this first. So let's delete this, do it again. Go to publish and here we go. So not necessarily single file, but a lot less file. So that's good. Let's try running this. And there we go, all good. Let's see what happens when we delete all this other stuff though. So we wanna leave the app settings.json since we read the connection string from there. And we obviously want our database too, but let's delete everything else. And is this gonna work? All right, definitely doesn't work. So publish single file isn't necessarily a single file, 
but it's a lot less files, so that's always good. Another thing I just noticed is that we never added an icon to our application. So we can go ahead and do that real quick. Let's add a new folder in our project for resources. So I add this icon in here. You can grab this from source control, but it's a .ico, which is the required file type for WPF application icons. But now we can just select that here. So resources, icon.ico, select that. And now we got a nice little hotel that's exciting. So let's publish again. So here we go. Our application was published and now our exe has this beautiful hotel icon. It appears in the top left and we even get it in the taskbar. Looks like I still got a background on it. Probably should have removed that, but I am pretty satisfied with the results. So lastly, if you're interested in automating your .NET publish with GitHub Actions CICD, I have a video on that that I'll link to. Not going to get into that here, but perhaps I'll publish this application and create a release on GitHub in case you're interested in downloading it. Since I'm sure everyone is just so desperate to download Reservoom and manage hotel reservations. How exciting. Anyways, these are the core concepts of WPF MVVM applications. You are now ready to venture out into the wild and apply these concepts to your own application. Feel free to use the source control as a reference. Be sure to stick around, subscribe, and check out my other videos for more advanced concepts, interesting experiments, and fun tutorials. If you're enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like and subscribe for more and go chase your dreams.